Hey everybody, this is John Mayer. I'm the Executive Director of CALI, the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. And uh, I asked Jessica just for a couple of minutes before uh, she starts her demo of uh, the new A to J author with, uh, with the document assembly. Um, no, we're not changing the name to A to J author TNG, which if you're a Star Trek nerd, that stands for the next generation. I'm just making a a reference back to when we uh, did our presentation at TIG and we had a whole uh, Star Wars meme. I didn't want to um, I didn't want to diss the people who also are uh, the Trekkies. This is huge for us. It's been a long road. Um, we're so happy that the that the enormous amount of effort that we put in getting to the point where we're we're confident enough to um, say let's start testing this with the community, our friends, our our family, um, most of the people on this call. You know, and and let's let's get ourselves off of uh, Flash. Let's get ourselves up into modern browsers. Let's let's move forward. So you know, uh, I have a couple of shout outs. The first one is um, the great majority of the of the actual programming work. We work very closely with a with a consultant by the name of Betovi. I, I can't recommend them enough. They're 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 so intelligent and so competent. They're they're uh, also excited to be working on this project. You know, and so I I couldn't recommend them more. But um. But in case you hear that name or hear that word, or when we say things in conversations about the Tovi, we're talking about the, a consulting group um, uh, that's headquartered here in Chicago that we work with uh, that's doing our JavaScript coding on uh, A to J author. Um, I can't not shout out uh, to Law Help Interactive. They've been extremely patient in working with us for uh, for all this time. So much of what we do has to be delivered through through their technical infrastructure, and so working with Claudia, uh, Greg, and of course uh, Doug, and all the technical team over there. Um, I'm afraid to list names that I'll forget somebody, and I'll just say that um, you know we continue to work with them and, and make things wonderful. We hope for the for the entire community. Thanks for all help. So what we're talking about here is uh, A to J five, um, and Jessica will go into more detail about what exactly that means. But it primarily means that the, the new version is a JavaScript program that runs A to J guided interviews. One of the biggest additions to this is that it, it has a, a responsive viewer. So if the screen is a small one, like on a phone, um, the interview will still work and still run. You know, three or four years ago when we got the first take to do this, it was like, well, you know, I don't know if, you know, a lot of people have phones, but um, I don't know if they're going to they're gonna bother to go through like a long interview on their phone, you know, but maybe we should start thinking about getting used to that. And today, the, the, the viewpoint is completely different. It's like, well, of course you got to support phones. More than 50% of the people, you know, coming to websites uh, do it through their phones, and especially uh, people uh, at the poverty level, which smartphone might be their primary way of uh, surfing the web. Um, so, so we're finally there. Um, the second thing is is uh, the document assembly capability. You know where we hope to make uh, hot docs um, optional. You know at first just the, the ability to to generate simple documents, simple forms, uh, letters, uh, pleadings, things like that. You know, and then as we as we get smarter and better and more capable, you know, to, to uh, iterate up into more complex um, documents and things like that. There's all sorts of reasons for that. Um, one of them is the cost, but but a main one for us is is training. Um, when we train people on uh, A to J5, especially law students, um, it's way more convenient and easier to train the students in one environment, one technical environment. Um, to have to train them in both A to J and in Hot Docs is a, a problem when people are trying to integrate this into their courses. Um, and I guess, and I would, I would imagine it's a problem for for anybody. You know, we, we want to reduce the complexity of uh, of creating or generating documents. Um, the third reason is um, the hot Docs developer environment, of course, is um, Windows or Microsoft Word only. And from from our side, and an, an increasing number of people are using Macintoshes, and, and so we have to be able to support that environment. We're, we're starting to get requests, uh, unsolicited requests from uh, from law schools to say, you know, I want to use this in my class. I want to I want to train students, and I want to find projects for my students to do. And so, um, you know, th this is a this is not just an important milestone for us for the legal aid community. It's also for the legal education community and what the legal and, and what we hope to do, which is to bring the legal education 
community to bear on the social justice problem. So lots of things happening all at once, you might say. Of course, we're going to be updating the website. Um, in terms of like uh, documentation and FAQs, the website is going to lag the, the features a little bit. We, we've gone through sort of um, cycles of making changes and, and updates to the content of the website, then making changes to the software, and then having to go back to the website and make changes. Um, and and we're, we're, a little bit, we're always a little bit behind on one or the other, um, you know, so bear with us. Please be patient. Um, we're a small group, Cali. This is, these are all our staff. Uh, I don't even have um, cartoon pictures yet for Jessica and for uh, Renella. And, and so, you know, there's only eight of us, um, and this isn't the only project that we work with, if you know anything about Cali. If you're a legal aid organization, you can join Cali for free. Um, and get access to our ebooks and our, our lessons. I always have to throw that out there as an executive director. You know, and we're looking to hire uh, another person in the very near future, someone who will be dedicated to um, A to J at the, uh, at the server side, someone who will help us with the um, uh, back-end development aspects because the document assembly tool is not something that sits inside the browser, at least not entirely. It's something that sits both in the browser and on a, on a server, and the complexity of that uh, requires, uh, you know, that we have a that we have a human being who who deals with them, some of those configuration issues. Um, if you're a techie, that's a DevOps sort of person or a backend developer type person that we're looking for. If any of you are interested in that position, send me an email. We haven't posted it or anything like that, but I just wanted to say those things. This is this is a big deal for us. We're really looking forward to, you know, this isn't the end. This isn't the beginning. This is uh, as Winston Churchill, I believe, uh, attributed this quote is. is this quote is attributed to him. This is the end of the beginning. Um, and uh, we expect to be able to grow on top of this platform, you know, on into the future. Don't hesitate if you find problems, bugs, or anything like that to, uh, to use the channels that Jessica will talk about to communicate to us. We know there are always going to be problems. Any development work in the browser JavaScript world is far more complex than development in the, in the old Flash world or in uh, even local download and install software world. But the benefits of doing it this way in the long run will, will greatly outweigh the, uh, the, the complexity that we're trying to deal with. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jessica and say, um, you know, thank you for uh, joining us on this journey. Thanks, John. And you all should be able to see my screen now. Is that correct, John? I can see it. Okay. So perfect. What we have here are a list of important links that I think you should have. Um, and a lot of these resources I'm going to talk about today in terms of accessing the Doc Assembly tool and tips that we've had and community testing. But I wanted to give you guys that handout to take with you for later. So today's uh, demo is intended to be that. It's not intended to be an, uh, a training on how to use the features. In November, I'm going in November and December and moving forward, I'll be doing more extensive training on how to use the document assembly tool. Um, the first of those, which will be next Thursday in our normal um, monthly slot for this uh, new user webinar, which will be November 3rd to Thursday at 11 Central. So you've already registered by coming today, so you are registered for the entire 2016 series. Um, and if I uh, see the need to add more trainings, I will announce those, of course, on the list. I'm also available for any one-on-one -on -one hand holding that you need, any help if you want to sit and have a go-to meeting where we screen share and we go through specific issues that you're having feel free to reach out to me, uh, jessica at cali.org. So first and foremost, just looking at this link, and then we'll dive actually into the tool, is where do you go to access it? So the A to J6, which includes our document assembly tool, as John mentioned, five is any uh, web-based A to J that uh, does not have a document assembly tool or the template built with it, A to J6, is an A to J guided interview and uh, a template or multiple templates that are built with an A to J. So that kind of is the name distinction. The uh, tool is sitting on our staging server, which is authordev.a to J author.org. It is a separate server and separate database from our production site, which is www.a to jauthor.org. So um, if you have an account on the www side, you need to have another account on the author dev site, 
Um, the second link down is how to access author dev. Basically gives it a URL and says to email me. So I create manually the accounts. I usually can turn it around in five less than five minutes um, during normal business hours, but definitely less than a day um, to get you a new account on author dev. And then uh, just going down this list, we have instructions on how to take your existing A to J guide to interviews and convert them from four to five instructions in there. And then I will be adding instructions on how, if you want to use the document assembly tool, how to do that as well. But these current instructions are for those of you that are part of the community testing with LHI and will be testing the latest version of our viewer and LHI's Rebuild QA server. Here's instructions on how to convert them, and then the bottom, how to test assemble and upload them to LHI. Just as LHI has a, a A to J5 community testing page, we have a testing page as well on our www site. That's the fourth bullet point down. Um, it contains all of these links as well, so if you lose that handout, you can always just go to a to jauthor.org, the Learn tab, it's the second uh, item down on the Learn tab. I've also created a known issues page, which is broken up in terms of A to J author itself, so that would be five, and the document assembly tool, which is six. So um, if you are testing and you hit uh, some of these issues, you want to check before you uh, report a bug to us, we'd appreciate you looking at the known issues. And those will be updated with um, when we are planning on rolling out the fixes for those. And then finally on here are testing tips and tricks. Authoring and working in a browser is a different environment than working on a downloaded piece of software. So some of the things that we're seeing um, with, with working in the browser is that there are caching issues. So one of the tips and tricks that I have, if your guided interview worked yesterday and all of a sudden it's not working today, um, if you've been working in one guided interview and you go to another and that second one isn't working like you're, you're expecting it to, it's likely due to caching. Uh, and I've included a link that explains how to clear your cache and do a hard refresh of your guided interview of, of A to J author in your browser, um, depending on what browser you're in, because it's different how you do it in Chrome versus uh, Firefox and Safari. As a note, last thing before we go into the doc assembly tool, any testing that you're doing, we, um, we do not recommend that you do it in IE right now. IE is handling uh, logic differently than every other browser, and we're working um, as fast as we can with our Batovi team to overcome those problems uh, that are only IE specific at this point. So we prioritized working on bug fixes for things that affected all browsers, and now that we've got to a stable platform, we're working on things that are IE specific. So I test heavily in Chrome, but feel free to test uh, in Firefox and Safari, whichever your preferred browser is. I'm going to take us into Author Dev. So this is authordev.a-to-jauthor.org. It's basically just the two tabs, the Home tab once you're logged in, and Author 6. Author 6 is where the actual a to j author tool, the software, lives. So once you have an account on Author Dev and you are logged in, you can just click Author 6, and up pops another tab. From this point, it should, if you've um, ever looked at A to J5 on the production site, look different but functionally similar. So we had a color scheme change. It's more Silicon Valley. Um, it's a little slicker than our rainbow colored theme on production. This is the version that Batovi has been working on the bug fixes for the last year and a half, two years, and we've been working really hard um, on this one. So when you get to author dev and you're in, this is the interviews tab, you can either create a, a new interview, a blank interview. You can upload up here existing guided interviews to convert them either from four uh, to the five version um, because they won't, any fours will not have an A to J template with them, so they'll just be A to J fives. Um, you can also take ones that you have on production or that other people have worked on and upload those guided interviews the same way. You can always edit uh, any of the interviews that you've ever worked on. Um, the interviews, when you upload them, are assigned a guide ID number. 
and it has a timestamp for the last time in which it was saved. So you, um, if you are having problems with a specific guide to interview, feel free to send me the guide ID and we can work on getting the, the, that problem fixed for you. But let's go into a blank interview and uh, you're taken to the Pages tab, which should look familiar to many of you. This is where you do your question design. Um, this isn't necessarily a training on um, how to create guided interviews, so I'm going to take you to the Templates tab, which is new. This is where the document assembly building, uh, where you will build your guided, your guided interviews templates. So um, this is a list of all the guided interviews that are associated with this template. As you can see, there are none, and A to J invites you to create one. If you had been working on guided interviews in the past and you have, uh, and you've built multiple templates, the list will be here. You'll be able to sort, you'll be able to delete, you'll be able to restore some of it. Um, if, for example, you had a huge list of templates, maybe your packet has uh, 40 different documents, you'd be able to search for them as well. And you can always test assemble the entire document assembly package from this point. Um, and let's go into a new template. This is the template design window. So um, this looks very different than what you may be used to in terms of document assembly. For generations, document assembly has been built on an existing document, most often edited in Word. Um, we're changing the way that uh, document assembly uh, is done. So just like Google Docs, uh, versus Word, we're hoping to be the web-based option for document assembly. Uh, and you start with a blank canvas. So uh, right now you have to um, create your document from scratch and you add elements to it. So we have the uh, template design sidebar, which is over here on the right. Um, and in the template design sidebar, we have the add elements. So you build a template by adding elements to it, chunks of either formatting or text or page breaks, logic, repeat loops, etc. And then there are template options, which are control the entire template, where the elements can be controlled individually within that element. The template options control the entire document. So you can add a header and a footer, which can contain variables. It has, I will show you our, our text editor in a second, but the uh, header and footer contain the full text editor. You can format within uh, the uh, template itself in terms of changing the font and changing the font size. You can add, uh, you can change how section numbering appears, either numbers, Roman numerals, or letters and you can make this template conditional. So we know there are a lot of situations when you only want to assemble a template if a specific condition is met. So they, uh, they only need a parenting agreement in a divorce if they have children. So you can tell A to J to only assemble this document if some uh, variable is true. So it's grayed out until you click that you want to make it conditional, then you type in a uh, variable once you start typing, A to J will pull up a list of all the variables that are in the variables tab that match the CL, and it's trying to auto fill in for you. And you can test, you can make something conditional on whether it's true or false, whether it equals something, uh, whether it doesn't equal it, whether it's greater than or less than. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on how to make your template conditional. We go back to the Add Elements tab. The first one, the most common that you're going to use, is rich text. I know it says rich text. That was a minor programming problem. It's, it's work being fixed. Adding a rich text element opens up two things. It opens up the CK editor, which is what we use for uh, the text editor. And it opens up a notes field. So the notes field, similar to A to J guided interviews, where you could add notes about the specific questions, you can add notes about why you added or what you did to this text. The notes are saved within the template file, but they are never displayed to the end user. So these, this would be a great area if you um, add a specific section because the income requirements for your legal aid are 125% of the poverty level, note that in your notes so that the next developer down the line 
knows uh, can check the notes section um, and will be able to build on your knowledge base. So um, just as a side note, one of the uh, new TIGs that we'll be working on in 2017 will be uh, working to be able to pull these notes sections out and create a sort of a report about your guided interview um, that you will be able to check to make sure the law is still good if the original developer added a citation. Um, you'll be able to check things like the income requirement is 125% of the poverty level, make sure that's still valid in your organization. We understand that there have been 10 plus years of development and some of these guided interviews are old and we want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to transition between developers um, as staff phases out and also to keep your guided interviews as updated as possible. So we have our notes section. I can type anything in, test note. Um, I can save and close it. I come back, test note is still there. My rich text editor, the, the CK editor is actually a pretty advanced text editor and allows you to do a lot of formatting um, things. Just to point out a couple that may be of interest to you all. You can embolden, italicize, underline, strike through, super and supra and superscripts. You can add lists, either numbered or bulleted lists. You can in and out dent. You can add block quotes. Um, you can add things like check boxes, and you can select whether the check checkbox can be ch is checked or if the checkbox is unchecked. We are working right now to uh, add in the functionality of being able to set whether a box is checked or not based on a variable. You can add in tables, radio buttons. Um, and most importantly to document assembly uh, is the ability to add variables. So um, as you scroll over an element or uh, an option within the CK editor, it tells you what it does. So feel free to explore these. If you have questions, reach out to me. But for example, this insert a variable, you select it. It's going to pull up a list of all the variables that you have in your guided interview. Because this is a blank interview, there aren't that many variables. I haven't created any. But again, as I start typing like CL, it's refining the list that it's giving me. And then I just have to select the variable I want to input and hit OK. And now client first name is inserted as a variable. And I can add text after it. Um, I can change the font and the size of this specific chunk of text sizing. I can add styling to it and you can even change the color of the text and the color of the background. One of the things we get asked a lot about in A to J is I really want to make it Comic Sans in my guided interview. Can't I change the font? Uh, you cannot in the guided interview but you can in the template so that gives you a lot more freedom. So here when you save, uh, when you're done editing an element, you always want to save and close it. And then you can continue to build your template. So if I want to add in a page break, I click it, it's there. I can add in more rich text, click it, it's there. Um, I can add in if else and repeat loops as well. And I'm going to show you a template that I built. As I was teaching this to some of the law students at Chicago Kent are the first uh, students that are actually building a complete A to J guided interview and template from scratch. Um, so we're training them in that this semester. So as I was teaching it to them, I made this demo for their class last week, um, and it has three templates. So we're back on that uh, list of templates. Here I have three. One that would be an instruction sheet for everybody one that's only for people with children, and then the actual sample motion itself. So I'm going to open up the sample motion. And you can see that I have rich text elements here with um, that mock up the caption. So each of these is a, this is a rich text element, this is a rich text element, and I'm able to mock up the ellipses and the formatting of a court form by using a table. And those of you that have done any Word documents with Hot Docs are familiar with the tables and you can uh, ensure that things are in the right place and make sure that it doesn't, that a variable doesn't go outside of the table, that kind of thing. Same sort of thing, you can edit table properties, same way, change how many pixels it is, that kind of thing. So something you'll just have to play with as you're building your template. I can have just a title and then here's where I have the variables, my checkbox, 
I have an, an if else statement that whether if the petitioner is the mother is true, then it will say I'm the mother of the children, respondent is the other parent. If petitioner's mother is false, then it would say I'm the father of the children, respondent is the mother of the children. I have if statements that if there has been a substantial change, then I want the box to be checked that says there has been a substantial change, here's the change. Else, there, is, there has not been a substantial change. And then you can include repeat loops. And repeat loops can be done two ways. I'm, I'll show you the two options here. Actually, repeat loops can be done three ways. I have two examples here. You can repeat a loop for a specific variable here based on child count, which any of you that have done repeat loops in A to J author know that your counting variable looks something like this. Um, this is my counting variable, and I want it to say, have a title over the section uh, of the loop that says names and ages of children. I can edit both of these uh, columns. I can set the width of the column, the percentage of how much it's supposed to take up. So I think the name is going to be about 75% of, uh, should be 75% of this table. The age is, only, is a small number, so it should only take up about 25%. I can make it condense, stripes, and when we go into more extensive trainings on A to J, I'll show you all these options. But then I add the variables that I want repeated, save and close, and so for this instance, it will loop based on child count for the, first, the name of the child, their first name, and their age. Uh, then I have more text with variables, more if-else statements. And then I have another way in which to do repeat loops. You can repeat again based on a counting variable, but within that, I wanted to have text to be repeated, like a chunk of text over and over again. So instead of a table, like I did for the children, I want text. I could have a list as well. Within the text option, I got my full CK editor again. I have a title for it that's set here. And then whatever text I wanted and whatever variables I wanted to be part of this repeated uh, section, I can add in here. So I have a, an asset that's this, and it's worth this amount of money. So if we, uh, i got to zoom out a second to go back. Um, you always want to save your template. It will, you always want to save your work. This is internal to A to J. Saving is done automatically every five minutes, but we've built in ways in which you can assure yourself that you've actually saved it, that you're within the, if you don't want to wait the extra five minutes. So you can force a save here for your template, and on the Pages tab, there's a Save button that we've added so you can force a save for your questions as well. If we go back out, I've created a uh, sample uh, answer file that we can test here. So instead of us having to go to Preview, walk through the entire thing, and hit Get My Document at the end, which would also trigger a test assembly, um, we can just test assemble with uh, an answer file. So if we go to test assemble, it's going to ask me to load answers. It's going to tell me that it's testing this guided interview's full file. And I ran through it this morning, so we'll test with that answer file. I have the option later to come back and clear these answers. So if I want to test for a case where people have children, I'll test that. If I want to test for a case where people don't have children, I can clear the answer file and load that as well. So when I click get PDF, it sends it to the PDF generator on our server, which is returning the PDF then to the end user. I open it up, and here is page one. These were the instructions that were for everybody, and there are some variables in here. If we zoom in, uh, the number of, or the name, Jane Ann Demo was the name of the respondent. The county courthouse that I wanted the end user to go to was here. How many copies to give to Jane and Demo again? And then this is completely customized instructions that you can add. We scroll down. I said in the interview that I do have children. So this is saying I've said I had two children. You need to print two copies. This is a variable. And here is a repeat loop based uh, on a list. So uh, the child's name, the child's age, again, the second child and their age. And then here is the motion. So these are the things that were variables. 17th, Cook, my name, the respondent's name, whether or not I'm the petitioner, that I am the mother of the children, the respondent is the other parent, there has been substantial change, here's the change. The names and ages of the children, and uh, this title is kind of large, but um, it is editable in size. 
Here's the repeat loop based on child count. I had two children. These are the two children and their twins, so that's their age. The variable based on uh, what date the original petition was filed on is there. The response is there as well, uh, whether they've agreed to it or not. And then here are the assets based on a repeat loop that I have a name of asset house and its worth is this amount. You can format these answers if you want it to come out in a specific way using things like the date function in A to J or the dollar, the round, the truncate, sum. All of those functions are available to you in A to J and they will um, allow you to format how your answer looks for your document. So that is an example of an actual PDF that generated. You saw how fast it generated. So um, this is a pretty quick process to get a PDF. Any questions, John, that you're seeing or um, anyone want to be unmuted? Uh, one question I see, are nested repeats possible? So you um, can do, let me see, let's open one up. Sorry, I got to shrink this a little bit. So if we add a repeat to it, it's going to be added to the bottom. Um, you cannot right now add a repeat within a repeat, but you can have a repeat within an if statement. So um, I can add an element that is a repeat loop inside of a conditional statement. Um, we are working to add repeats within repeats right now. Second question. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you capitalize a variable answer in rich text? Yes. Uh, um, I I think that means a function, though, that, that no matter what they type in, will it, will it capitalize it? Like, like if they typed in small j-o-h-n, will it, will it print it as a capital j-o-h-n? I, I, uh, you can answer that, but I don't think we have a function that does that just yet. Um, you can add styles to it. So if we select this variable and uh, the styles, you could make it bigger. Um, but yeah. there's no... It doesn't that, look like a, what's force it. All the cap sort of like um, function mm -hmm. um, or, um, but the, the, the design, design of, uh, of the interface is such that we can add more functions as we, as we think them up um, you know and, and we have we have dozens of ideas for doing that but we didn't but uh, you know we wanted to get the basics uh, working first so um, we'll, we'll add that as a, as a as a feature request yeah I'd love to hear what you guys want to see as well so positive things rather than uh, just A to J is broken. I like getting the emails that say it would be really great if it could do this, for example, of forcing the formatting of the answer. Um, or if it's something on your court form that you want to be able to replicate, let me know and we'll try and figure out a way in which to add that. Um, things where we have brewing in the works. Formatting a caption was incredibly difficult to figure out how to do. Fussing with tables and the sizes and the pixels that it takes up. So we're trying to make that easier for you guys and add an element that would be a uh, template caption. So it would look like, um, like a caption is supposed to look with the ellipses and the three columns kind of thing. Um, so that's in the works. But I'd like to hear any po um, any suggestions you guys have. Two, two more uh, questions. Yep, I see them now. Um, does, the, does the template creation interface work from a tablet or do you need to use a laptop? Um, I'll answer that. Um, laptop. Um, I don't know that we've even tested it much on uh, on tablets or iPads. Uh, um, I, tested the it, I tested it on my phone. I had to make a fix last minute before I did a demo and I fixed it on my phone. It's clunky because it's super small because I forced the desktop version uh, of the browser on my phone, but you actually are able to edit uh, from a phone. Not recommended, though. Right. And uh, Mark asks, uh, just uneditable PDF output for now? And yes. the answer is yes for now. Um, TF is a goal, but uh, um, it, it's, it's a lot trickier, <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely a goal on our on our on our uh, on our roadmap. Yeah. And actually, Mark, uh, um, I think PDFs are somewhat editable in Acrobat, but but I don't but but that requires people to have the uh, what it was it not not just the reader but the Pro. Um, the Adobe Pro version of Acrobat. And um, yeah, we don't want we don't want to go down that path because as soon as you start editing in a PDF, you run into formatting problems pretty quick. And then if. Um if there aren't any questions on this, just here is the community testing page 
with the links that I mentioned before. It's right under Learn, second one down on www. If you want an account and you want to start working uh, today in our document assembly tool, or if you're working as part of the community testing with LHI to convert your old guided interviews to five, you also need to do that on Author Dev, and you need a separate account, so email me. You know, this is kind of a um, testing time as we go through this change, and I am always available to help. We have resources here at Cali that can help you with conversions um, if you need it. It's often a pretty quick process. It's the testing of the converted um, thing that takes a little while, um, but we have that available to you guys. Um, John, any last words? No, we wanted to keep this short. It's uh, 40 minutes into the, into the thing. We're looking forward to uh, working with you guys in the future. You know, like I said, this is the uh, the, the end of the beginning, and um, you know, here we go. The roller coaster starts. <laughs> awesome. So we'll have a more in-depth training on how to use it next Thursday on November third. So thank you all for coming. Thanks, folks.